So let me just quickly talk about what I am going to talk here. Here animation is not working. So let me just go back. Try, <coughs> Try whatever I can do. So I am going to talk about big data versus data science and machine learning practices in the industry. And the idea is that to clarify a lot of things. I mean, I have seen people talking, asking several questions, which uh, some of them should get answered here. So, you know, idea is to get rid of some confusion and help you understand that the practicality of the usage, that, you know, what you learn, how it is useful. And I'll show you some of the things also. Please understand that, you know, it is bound to happen that Anything can be debated and for any speaker, you can say that, you know, this can be achieved by this method and this can be achieved by that method. So obviously, you know, you need to understand uh, this, what I'm saying is, uh, is in reality. So first of all, what you need to understand, the big data that way, the big data track is actually a technology track. The big data track is all about how can you store data and how you can process humongous amount of data to give the answer. It is not about giving the answer. It is an enabling function. It is about creating that infrastructure, creating that big system where analytics folks can work on. Now look at what is data science. Data, and you know why I'm, I have put a particular line here that you know many big data science scores actually have no analytics. There is no data science involved there. At max what is there is just R programming. And you know, uh, Actually, I'm very connected with many folks and they write to me that, you know, not only just India, in, in, in fact, like in different foreign countries also, that people feel cheated that, you know, they have done the data science, big data science course, and there was no science at max, little bit of our programming, and they are not able to get into where, where they wanted to go. And that's what you need to understand that data science, it's big data track is all about creating that infrastructure. Whereas data science track is actually applying analytics to solve business problem. And what kind of business problem? I'll just show it to you. So let's move quickly. What is data science actually? In reality, you can say there are three components of data science. One, you can say SAS, R, Python, anything. For that matter, SAS, R, Python is all about it. It's giving you a tool by which you can apply. You can play with the data. The second piece comes the basic statistics. You know, people forget, but Trust me, basic statistics is everywhere. This is the bedrock on which things are operating. And then comes the third piece, which is the machine learning, which are applied statistics. And you can say it's the advanced stage of statistics or econometrics. For that matter, econometrics is applied statistics on economics. And machine learning is just an extension. I'll clarify a lot of things about that, how things and how terms have changed over time and how it has created a lot of confusion among people. So if you look at, what was being called analytics till 2000, you know, very soon people started calling it data science and machine learning. And what has changed? I mean, at one point in time, SPSS used to be the number two tool after SAS. What changed from SPSS, the place was taken by R. And if you look at in decision tree, what has come with random forest? And random forest, if you look at it, is nothing but just a collection of lot of classification tree. So random forest is not a new thing for that matter. And if you look at, you know, what new thing came here is like deep learning and Python. And now people are calling it more machine learning and artificial intelligence. What you need to understand, it is a lot more packaging than it appears. It's seriously. And in fact, the overlap here is probably in the tune of 85, 90 percent. If at all, the definition of artificial intelligence is that an algorithm can take a decision, then for that matter, all scoring that we have done till date is actually nothing but the artificial intelligence. Because you're based on the score, you're approving someone, based on the score, you're rejecting someone, and in between, you're throwing it to human being so that it can be interpreted. So that way, that was nothing but the artificial intelligence. And if you look at what is artificial intelligence, if you look at carefully, Deep learning is a specific type of ANN, artificial neural network. Deep network learning is all about a very big artificial network which has very many different layers and you are intelligently assigning the initial weights and biases and due to which it is converging very fast. 
So it's an improvement over artificial intelligence, but it is still very much deep learning. If you understand artificial neural network, you will be able to grasp deep learning concepts much easier. And deep artificial neural network for that matter is just a type of machine learning. Machine learning has many algorithms like logistic regression, decision tree, decision tree are two kind, classification, regression, cluster analysis. All those are machine learning and artificial in neural network is just one of them. And what is artificial intelligence? If you look at artificial intelligence, it's a little bigger umbrella, which is probably the complete machine learning piece is involved there. And artificial intelligence, if the definition goes, that it is all about a algorithm taking a decision that then we are seeing that every day in our home. Look at when you open fridge, the light comes, correct? If it is open for slightly longer, the sound starts coming. These are again, look at the intelligence is built in, right? I mean, you know, we are using these terms, but these terms are not new. These terms are there and everything is based on statistical concept. Statistics make the big bedrock on which everything is operating. Now, if you look at what are the two main ingredients of artificial intelligence, it's all about statistical concepts, like in bigger umbrella, everything taken together and the business context. It is very important to understand business context on which you need to apply it you know, on sales, how it will apply on uh, probably uh, on uh, hospital data and how it will apply on financial data. These are two different things. There is a matter of life and death, there is a matter of some loss. And that's where the challenge changes, the threshold changes. And then comes the intelligent programming for success, where you know, you are applying it in such a way so that it can operate. Next comes the big data track and this also I want to highlight because you know many of you get uh, you know you see the salary right very high salary very high salary but please understand you know before making payment that is this curriculum and the salary trend is of the same thing or not sometimes the salary trend is of analytics and the course is big data and you are going and making payment and I have seen many people who start asking questions after making payment that's not the right time. The right time is that, you know, you should ask the questions before making payment because then you will understand that what it is. Now, coming back to that, you know, just to give you an idea that analytics, you know, probably or data science for that matter will definitely have a much higher salary than uh, big data. And there is a reason to master big data concepts. You require two months. If you are already knowing SQL, you are already knowing some of the thing. In two months time, you'll be pretty comfortable with many things. All so-called no SQL, pig, hive, you will find it is very similar to SQL that you have been writing till date. And it is, you know, you'll, there are not much here. You look at Unix. There are 20 Unix commands, which probably 95% of the time is sufficient for you to do the job. Whereas analytics will require you a little longer, probably three times of the effort. And that's where is the scarcity. It's always the pyramid and that's why you have less people there and that's why the salary is higher and less requirement also. Let me be very honest. You know, there are not so many people who need to code. There are one or two guys who gives the algorithm, other needs to code. If everybody starts giving algorithm, then who will code? Right? <laughs> and you know, the story that you think that, you know, like five data scientist guys were given 50 crore of salary. Look, understand that way that these are the salary given to some of those folks who are not knowing only data science, they were knowing the business domain, they were seasoned professional knowing many things and they were able to guide the complete organization to the path of, you know, where the analytics can be applied and that's why they were paid. So just understand it before making payment. Now let me quickly walk you through that, you know, what are the terms of big data graphically because then you'll uh, start uh, like whatever I've told you that it's a platform creation, you'll understand it pretty soon that how it is. So look at, you know, I'm going to introduce you to MapReduce because that's what people keep talking, MapReduce, MapReduce everywhere. What is MapReduce? So think of this way. I have a 50 gigabyte data, right? And my boss asked me that give me the top five value. Let's say this is just a score. A score of like, you know, or let's say, uh, you know, weight of a 10 year old kid of the complete India. And this is a 50 gigabyte file. Right? Now I can't give it, right? I have Excel only. Let's say for example, I have only Excel in my PC. What will I do? Now what I can do 
if at all I have a splitter, I can split this file into 100 pieces. So each of them is 0.5 gigabyte. And now I have 100 of my friends sitting here. I can say them, you know, just give me among each 0.5 gigabyte chunk the top five value. What top five value? Because all top five highest value can be residing in one of the chunk itself. So all of you are given 0 0.5, 0 0.5 gigabyte. What you did, all of you took in Excel, all of your Excel is sufficient to keep 0.5 gigabyte, which is 500 MB, and you gave me five, five results. 100 of you gave me result. How many I got? I got 500 values. And now I can easily sort them and keep the five values. Now understand what you have done. This breakup of the pieces is called map. So map part of the map reduce algorithm is where you break that work into multiple chunks. Because there are hundreds of computers which judge, not just two or three computers, hundreds of the servers did the job, that's why it is called massive parallel processing or MPP in short form. Massive parallel processing. And what is this all? This is reduced because you know everybody gave the job and from there I collected the top five. So that is nothing but the reduce. And that's where complete map reduce comes. However, don't get confused. In the coding framework, when you say Spark is 100 times faster than map reduce, map reduce and Spark both use as map reduce as an algorithm. In the beginning, when the Java code was written, they were applying map reduce, but they were putting data into the place and coming back. And that's where there was too much data in input and output timing. And that's where a spark became better because a spark brings everything into memory. There is no input output. And that's why it is 100 times faster than, many times faster than MapReduce. But MapReduce and Spark both uses this MapReduce algorithm intrinsically. Keep in mind, MapReduce is an algorithm. Ma there is a MapReduce coding framework in the Hadoop world, but that's all about the coding framework. Ne let me introduce you to more, two more terms because then you'll understand properly. So here you have general usage hardware. You have a name node. Why name node? Because here you are putting data separately. Understand that way that, you know, probably if I have a big, huge movie database and these are MP4 file, I can't keep it. So I gave 99 data to someone, 2000 data to someone, 2001 data to someone, 2002 data to someone. So you have, you know, a so lot of data. Now, if at all someone is asking that, give me all Amitabh Bachchan's movie, I need to go into different databases, right? I need to know which are the years where Amitabh Bachchan appeared. So there is need of some computer to keep a track of where what data resides, a table of content. And that's what is called name node. So name node in big data framework is that computer which has the list of where what data resides. Then comes HDFS. HDFS is nothing but a software. It's Hadoop distributed file system which runs data, which stores data in these unique systems. It interacts intrinsically with Unix file system. And then you have these name node actually applied map reduce algorithm to give data to different server and then collect back data. Then you have several things like a scoop or flume. A scoop or flume is for input and output, export and import of the data in the big data framework. What you have, pig, hive, no SQL, which are again like for information retrieval. What you have, R Hadoop. R Hadoop is actually not new. R Hadoop actually is nothing but the R programming only. It just runs separately and gives you the data back. Somebody who is writing R program will write R program exactly in the same way in which he was writing till date in probably in his R studio, in his local machine. So R programming is not changing. It's the implementation is changing and Mahavat is for machine learning. If you look at by now you have got introduced to several terms of big data. Let me show you some more term. Like you know, you have several elephants, then you'll require a zookeeper to keep them, right? Similarly, when you have several servers, you require a computer to control all of them that you know, so that you are knowing what is happening everywhere. And this computer is called zookeeper. And these are the term of, if you look at the whole term of big data has come like, you know, animal kingdom, pig, hive, no, you know, like that way. So it just, you know, it just extends and people have kept adding new language with that name, you know, like, and everything is linked with that way. Like probably look, if you look at pig, pig, you know, can eat anything. And that's why probably pig can read any unstructured data. Because, you know, like pig is, <laughs> pig goes, right? It, 
and you know even the programming the command name is like that like you know grunt because pig grunts right <laughs> it's actually like that <laughs> so similarly you have so all this was giving you a idea about what is big data and understand big data you know most of the time it is a platform creation it enables data science to do the job it enables the enabler of data science and when you are if at all you are turning you are trying to learn this make sure you learn from that place which gives you a virtual environment where you can try it so that you can see it from your eyes and master it now let me introduce you to data science what it is so first thing i talked about sas or python all these are by method by which you play with the data apply machine learning algorithms and if you are trying to master it here keep in mind the best way would be that you know you learn the syntax but you must also operate on some exercise some case study you must operate on at least 10 exercise where you know the cases is given to you that okay this is the situation how will you do it you do it and if at all you can't do it you should be able to see the solution by this method only you will get the comfort sas and r programming i'll come back to that again once again i'll show it to you it is a damn easy thing it is at max 15 days effort for anyone who is not even knowing anything to learn it and i'll show you why i'll give you example to show you why so i'm stopping it here now look at statistics i mean in whole thing probably what is the most complicated you know is understanding the basic statistics the applied statistics part like when it comes to logistic linear regression you know chi square those are relatively easier what is more difficult piece is actually the basic statistics probably here to here you know and if at all you are just trying to learn it and i must say i mean uh, it's my again my own view and uh, uh, like you know just feel free to forgive me if at all it doesn't suit some of you i have seen many of the very capable very knowledgeable professors who are i should say really you know uh, one of the most intelligent folks in on earth not been able to explain things in a way by which people common people like me can understand they will explain it in such a way that you know you will feel like you know like you are not meant for that you will feel that you know <laughs> kahan tapak gaya right and you know like i had more experience on that like when i used to ask people used to say how did you pass engineering because person like you should not pass only <laughs> so i should say you know this happens because you know most of the time these great folks do not understand the pain of common people like me who will come and say okay here is the null hypothesis without explaining you the context so the right way of learning statistics is that you learn through a context you learn first a story that okay there was one truck came you can't check everything so you checked some part and that one some part that you checked is actually sample rather than saying this is the population and this is sample you should learn through example if at all people are explaining you this is the positive correlation he should say see 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 height is increasing weight is increasing and that's why there is a positive relationship if somebody is explaining you like that you will learn for life otherwise you know what will happen actually this will happen to you you see here blood is oozing out right and this actually can happen i mean you know i have seen people like who have paid 3000 4000 rupees per hour you know they are also saying after 3 4 hours that bahut ho gaya so just understand that you know and uh, what is the right way of learning please understand if you are saying how should i learn statistics the right way of learning is that you know keep in mind slow and steady wins the race my view will be that you know you dedicate one to two hour daily not more than that because then you know you start your brain starts uh, you know like feeling it will be bitter sensation <laughs> secondly like you know create a small group right you know one or two friend where you can discuss what you have learned today because that's where you know start getting grasping of the thing if you are not getting anyone try to think over when you are having lunch or you know like free time whatever because at that time when you recall what you have learned that time it will become you will become master and if you do this way you know at max 6 month trust me at max within 6 month if you are learning through simulation and that what kind of simulation 
that somebody is showing you simulation and giving you data and asking you to do simulation on your own. Download data, you should be able to do simulation. If you are doing that way, you will learn for life. These are so simple things that if you learn once, you will not forget. Otherwise, you know, always you will feel normal distribution means line like this. But what does it mean? You know, what is this? Right? And that's where the challenge comes. You should be able to understand it through example so that you can relate to what is this graph. And that's where is the challenge. Now coming back to that, you know, many people feel that, you know, it's not possible to learn statistics through simulation. These are the links you can try on YouTube. I mean, I'm sure that you'll be getting the PDF as a part of the presentation. See it, this, this is actually possible. I have taken some data, 30, 30, 30 data and run it and it actually gives, you know, from uniform distribution, you are getting normal distribution. It is actually possible to learn statistics through simulation. Next part is that machine learning. Now let me talk about what are the machine learning practices in the industry. So two part of the data science I have already covered, R, SAS and uh, statistics. Now I am coming back to machine learning and that's where the second part of the topic comes, machine learning in the industry. So which are the topic? There are three type of machine learning that is quite popular in the industry. Supervised, unsupervised, reinforced. Don't worry about that if you have not understood. I'll explain you what it is. Because that's what it is when the, you know, in the beginning you don't. So before I explain you anything, let's first understand the need. Why the hell analytics ports are paid, right? What is the need? So let's understand what is the need, what, what do they do really? Why they are getting, why they are, actually why such a buzzword and I will give you an example which you will definitely understand. So let's say that you had 100,000 prospects who can take your product and what you did, you created a small CD, some, uh, you know, a browser and some detail, probably that costed you 200 rupees and you sent it to 1 lakh guys. So what is your total cost? 2 crore. Correct? You send to 100,000 guys a CD and browser, a complete package which costed you 200 rupees. Correct? And out of that, actually, 1,000 became your customer. So, what is your cost per person? 20,000. Correct? Look at 100,000 into 200 and then you will divide by these 300 will go. So that will become 20,000 rupees, right? And your total profitability may not be 20,000 rupees. Think of such a big cost. And let's say your manager comes and starts blasting you, what the hell you have done? So what you did, you call someone like analytics folks. He said, this is what is happening. Do something. So what this guy does, he goes through data. And this example is actually on $2. So that's what it is coming out to $200. Let's stick to the dollar so that you can, you know, quickly relate to. So $2 per person, 200,000 and divided by 1,000. So become $200 per person. So what he does, now you have in the past data. So you have gone, seen the past data you sent to one lakh guys, 1,000 responded. All those responded, call him one, responder. And all those who did not respond, 99,000 guys, call him zero. Now, let's go, let's go for the pattern recognition algorithm which can detect the pattern that who are the guys who will respond to you. So, the moment you know who are the and I'll show you some of the examples, some of the algorithms which can do the job. Then what has happened and this is an example but this actually happens. I mean, we had done thousands of cases where we are able to do it very successfully. So, what has happened? So, you sent to only 20,000 guys and you got 900 people who became your customer. So now look at cost first of all. 20,000 guys into $2. So total cost? 40,000. 20,000 guys into $2, 40,000. How many became your customer? 900. What is the cost per person? Somewhere close to $45. It is a huge reduction in the cost. And then you can actually become profitable. Now how he done it? I'll explain you some of the algorithm which can do the job. But what you two things you need to understand. First of all, there is no chance that he can get all thousand and there is no chance need to work if you have to operate on one lakh, all one lakh. So what is the way out? You select these 20,000 probably move from Mumbai, from Bangalore, all these 20, 20. So only on one lakh budget, you will get 900 into five. So 4,500 responder. So your response rate increased by 4.5 times. And that's where is the 
benefit and that's why analytics is loved because that's where the cost benefit comes now if you look at what is the scenario so tell me in one this scenario in the past data there was zero and one known correct the zero and one was known so what was you trying to do you were trying to find pattern of what are the kind of profile who will become zero and what are the kind of profile who will become one right and that's why this is called supervised learning why supervised learning because there is a zero and one known your algorithm is trying to go through the data and find the pattern that who will become zero who will become one correct so that's why it is a supervised learning where there is a dependent variable zero and one is the response variable known this is the piece when people say predictive analytics they refer to this piece this is the first type of machine learning when people say predictive analytics they refer to this piece and when people say modeling most often they not they refer to this piece most of the people when they say modeling they refer to this piece here outcome is known and it is called pattern recognition so let me quickly talk of the two three algorithm which can do this kind of job so one of the tool is called classification tree the classification tree is an example of decision tree why you call it tree because if you look at this is root then two branches then this branch again became bigger than this branches so if you look at it is like a inverted tree correct and that's why you call it classification tree why you are calling classification because essentially if you look at the percentage of zero and the percentage of one if you black is zero and this is one it changing in of all of them so what you are doing your classification is changing in different nodes this is what is called your root node this is what is called your leaf node and how the algorithm works if you have many red and black which you are trying to separate out it tries to take one class one side another class that side so that you can get pure classes as much as pure classes possible it is a kind of segmentation where the concentration or the percentage of one kind of outcome zero or one kind of outcome is different in different node here it is much less here it is much more and that's why you can operate if you look at what you did there when i explained the example you actually created this kind of group right so that what was your you know response rate which was 1% you make it 4.5% now here again one thing comes when you talk to business and when you say this kind of result next time he will say yaar tu pura wahi de dena jis respond aata hai means like you know give me those 900 who will respond and trust me it is not possible see what you need to understand there are you know all people who have similar income and similar capability not necessarily all of them will go for iphone you know somebody's daughter has dropped the phone and it is cracked yesterday that is probably captured on facebook where it would have cracked somewhere but not necessarily all data is integrated right not necessarily you are listening all data on the real time so it is not possible i mean you can even in if you ask me in 10 years time we will be able to increase the predictability that way but you know still you will not never be able to reach 100% there was one case where we created a model and it was giving 4% response so essentially you are calling 100 guys four are ultimately converting to you know so somebody came and bashed us he said you know what the hell 96 are not taking so can no problem so you do try on your own what you knew what he did again he called 10000 people four took it so i said ultimately from my 10000 you took 400 and that's where is the difference if you if you look at i gave him 99 times jump he's right i didn't you know my algorithm was not able to capture those 9600 people who didn't take it but then without algorithm you are able to capture just four out of 10000 and that's the power of analytics but all said and done you need to understand analytics is all based on data science palmistry nahi kar rahe right na <laughs> we are not doing palmistry haath dekh ke bata rahe ki ye lega pakka <laughs> now let let's go to the next topic you know this is called regression tree this is another kind of decision tree decision tree is of two kind classification tree regression tree A regression tree is when your outcome is actually numeric and if you look at what is happening here average is here here average is more here average is change so what has changed the average value has changed there the percentage of classes were changing here the average value has changed 
this is called regression tree and this is for numeric outcome if you look at the first i explained you was categorical outcome zero one who will respond who will not who will default who will not who will make payment who will not who will marry to you who will not correct that's a classification tree I mean, somebody has developed a classification tree to predict among the, all the prospect who are the guys who has the high chance of marrying people like me, right? No, no, from past data, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so regression tree. Then comes the logistic regression. Most of the time, when people say scoring, changing outside temperature, so gas supply, so you can prepare for the demand, and that helps. You not get the bottleneck. In one of the case study, Walmart figured out. That when there is a chance of hurricane, people look for things like bread, which can be prepared with little cooking, you know. And people are storing those bread, beer, and all those things. Then what you can do? You know that hurricane is going to come. Put get heli from helicopter or whatever. Get all the ingredients so that people can get it. It's the need, correct? <coughs> they should not run away. Try to find here and there. So you can better prepare for the demand, correct? And trust me, business analytics is applicable for any kind of business. People think of, you know, he can, business analytics is very applicable here, but manufacturing may not work. Because you don't know how to use it. It works all right? And you know, it can give to any business, any operation, it can get benefit. If you know how to use it.